Hello and welcome to the Central Florida Consortium of Private School Counselors College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer any questions. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Central Florida. That's strivescan.com slash Central Florida. And now let's turn it over to our first presenter, Salve Regina University. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Jared um, Soloway. I am an admissions counselor up here at Salve Regina University, all the way up in Newport, Rhode Island. Salve Regina is a small school, about 2,100 students. Um, we were founded by a Catholic order called the Sisters of Mercy um, all the way back in 1947. So we're coming up on our 75th anniversary. Um, we're a very social justice oriented um, university, meaning that we have these five critical concerns which um, follow you throughout your time uh, at Salve and hopefully into your life in the future. Um, like I said, we're about 2,100 undergraduate students. We have a sizable graduate population as well. Um, and that makes us on the smaller side of the university spectrum. But what that also means is you're gonna have small classrooms, probably similar to the size of your high schools right now, if not even smaller. Um, and the majority of our students do come from out of state. Um, we're centrally located. So if you haven't had the chance to come up to New England at all in your life, um, Newport is the perfect place to begin your New England journey. Um, being up in Boston, um, Providence, and we're also only a few hours away from New York City. It's a very centrally located campus. On my background right here and on these um, picture on the far right, you can see that we um, are located right on the ocean within a lot of these old historic 19th century um, Gilded Age mansions. They make up our classroom buildings, a lot of our residence halls, and that really makes it um, an inspiring and a unique place to be um, at college. We are a liberal arts school, so we have programs in a bunch of different stuff. Feel free to take a look here, take a screenshot of this picture if you want, um, and all this information is on our website. I'm not gonna go through and read all these, um, but you can see that we have programs all across the board from accounting to music to studio art. Some minors as well. We emphasize at Salve Regina what we like to call experiential learning. What that essentially means is you're gonna be outside the classroom, more than you're inside the classroom, whether it be through internships, um, whether it be through capstone experiences, um, mission trips, going all across the world. Um, there's lots of experiences and lots of opportunities to um, get out of the classroom, get your hands dirty and have that hands-on experience that's so important while you're in college. Of course, you're gonna be outside the classroom a lot. So what are you gonna do when you're outside? Probably being, uh, probably working at clubs, you know, working downtown in Newport. Newport's a small city. It's a great place to be. Um, I encourage you to look more into it if you're interested. Um, or playing sports games. We're a Division three university, which is kind of unique um, among a lot of the colleges that are in this um, area, especially those in the South. Um, what that means is you're going to have uh, sort of a nice balance between academics and athletics while you're at um, Salve. Here's some more fun pictures of stuff that goes on on campus. We have everything from guest speakers to our club involvement fair, which is kind of like the beginning of the movie Pitch Perfect, if any of you have seen that. Um, community service is really big to us at Salve. All of our students complete at least 10 hours. Um, if you want to sail, take some sailing lessons. We have those offered as well. I'm trying to take some of those in the fall, I mean, in the summer. Um, some of our application deadlines, these aren't super important to know right now, but just know that we have a bunch of different options for you um, to get to know, uh, to apply to Salve. That's the most important thing. Um, here are just some more basic numbers about Salve. Once again, these aren't super important to you right now. Um, just know that we are um, test optional university. 
um, and we try to make it as accessible as possible to everyone who wants to apply. Newport is a really special place. We really hope to um, sort of bring um, more, we want to have as many different kinds of perspectives um, there as possible um, and to make it as good a place as possible. Hopefully, Save is the place for you to do that. Um, in terms of some of our financial aid, of course, we're a, uh, we try to make college as affordable as possible. I'm a recent college grad myself. I understand how much of a racket it can be, but just know that um, almost every single person who applies to Salve receives some kind of financial aid, um, some sort of financial assistance, whether it be merit-based, need-based, or through some of our many other scholarship opportunities. Um, and with that being said, we always have a number of opportunities to get to know Salve a little bit more, um, whether it be through in-person open houses, virtual workshops, virtual info sessions, which we also offer all the time. Um, all of our counselors are more than happy to get to know you. Um, we wanna help you out and make the college application process um, basically as easy as it possibly can be. Obviously it's difficult in Florida making your way up to Rhode Island on such, um, you know, all the time. So like I said, we have a lot of virtual opportunities to get, for you to get to know Salve um, a little, just a little bit better. Thank you so much. And a reminder to all of our participants to use that Q&A function to ask questions of any of our schools here at any time tonight. We appreciate it. All right, up next we have Fairleigh Dickinson University. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining us tonight. My name is James Brennan. Um, I'm an, I am an admissions counselor at Fairleigh Dickinson University. FDU is one of the largest private institutions in the state of New Jersey. We have two distinct campuses in New Jersey. So we have our metropolitan campus located in Teaneck, New Jersey, which is, uh, as you can see on the map here, it is Northern New Jersey. And then we also have our Florham campus located in Madison, New Jersey. So that's a little, further south and a little more central location. We have 100 plus different majors and concentrations to choose from. So lots of different areas of study that you can get into. We have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. We also have an average class size of about 16 students in a classroom. So we definitely have smaller classes. It's really great for our students. Kind of get more one-on-one -on -one connection with your professors. They know you on a more personal level. So you're, ne you're never just gonna be a numbered student in a 100 person lecture hall. You'll always be a name, a base as well. We have 112 different clubs and organizations to get involved with across our two campuses. So lots of ways to get involved in different organizations to join. We also offer combined degree programs. Currently we have about 43 different combined degree programs where you can earn both a bachelor's and a master's degree in just five years time. We also try to make college as affordable as possible and that starts with our scholarship aid. So as soon as you apply to FDU, you're automatically going to be considered for a merit award. Last year alone, we were able to award $115 million in total of scholarship aid um, to our incoming undergraduate students. Across our student body, we are represented by over 55 plus different countries. So lots of different students coming from not just across the US, but also across the world. So we do also have a pretty good international population as well. We have about 5,400 undergraduate students across our two campuses when you break down by each campus. Metropolitan is gonna be about 3,000 students and then the Florida campus is about 2,600 students. We also have NCAA athletics programs. The neat thing about Fairleigh Dickinson is we offer both division one and division three men's and women's teams. So division one is gonna be your highest level of NCAA competition. And then we also have division three, which is the lower level of competition. This is a quick snapshot of our metropolitan campus. So you see this body of water here, that is the Hackensack River. So the Hackensack River runs across the campus. Um, you may be wondering how you get from one side of the campus to the other with a river in between. As you can see in the bottom left corner, we also have our footbridge. So that connects the two sides of the campus. The entire campus is walkable. You can get from one end to the other in about 15 minutes. This is a snapshot of our Florham campus, in particular this building here. This is Hennessy Hall, otherwise known as the mansion. So beautiful scenery 
up at Florham. It's a very picturesque campus. The layout of the campus was actually designed by the same person who designed Central Park. So I don't know if anyone in here has ever been to New York City, but Central Park in New York City um, is a great tourist location. Um, and it kind of is, the Florham campus is kind of like the college campus version of that. So it definitely is really beautiful scenery there. Like I said, over 100 different majors and concentrations to choose from. Our website is definitely the first place you want to go to to learn about everything that we have to offer. We have nine different colleges and areas of study. So if you ever were interested in finding out more about a certain major, about some of the course you'd be taking, if you want faculty contact information, all that's going to be listed on our the website. We also put a large emphasis on experiential learning opportunities, in particular internships. So the career development will be the first place you want to go to for when you're starting to think about internships. Most of our FTU students in their time here have at least one internship. Some end up having two or three internships. So we do put a lot of emphasis on professional development and gaining professional experience before you graduate. Career development, Sarah, you can go there right away. And at the very least, they can help you work on your resume, whether they, whether you have a resume already, they're just helping you edit it, or if you're starting from scratch, they can help you out with that process. Lots of different companies in our surrounding areas that reach out through our Career Development Center about college internship opportunities. So if they see an internship opportunity that matches up with what's on your resume, they'll reach out directly to you and they'll help you out with that entire process. Also within our classrooms, we have different networking and mentorship opportunities. We have different guest speakers come in. So this is another place where having smaller classes is definitely a great benefit to our students. So as I mentioned, we are in Northern New Jersey. So we are very close to New York City, which is a great benefit to our students. Our Metropolitan campus is only six miles away. So it's right there in our backyard. Our Florham campus is about 35 miles away. Each campus has public transportation, both bus and train into the city within walking distance of the campus. So very easy to commute into New York City, whether you're going for a day trip to go to Broadway, Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, Madison Square Garden, lots of different sites to see in New York City. Or even if you have an internship based out in New York, we have easy access to be able to get into the city. Lots of our FDU students throughout the years have had internship opportunities based out in New York. We also offer study abroad opportunities. So we have short-term and long-term study abroad options. So you can go away for a full semester or just a few weeks and gain that study abroad experience. Our students over the years have been to over 60 different countries. So lots of different places you could go. We also have two FDU Air National campuses, Roxon College, which is over in England and FDU Vancouver in Vancouver, Canada. So these are FDU affiliated schools. So they're definitely two of our most popular study abroad options that we have to offer. This is a little bit about the application. So our application is on a rolling admissions basis. You can apply in two different locations. Number one is through our website, fdu.edu slash go. That will take you to the, the FDU application, or you can apply through the Common App as well. We don't have preference which one you're using, as long as it ultimately gets submitted. And then this is just some information about how you can learn more about us on our website, whether you want to take a virtual tour, find the application. We have our FDU toolkit, which has tons of information about the university. And we even have an instant messaging feature with all of our current FDU students. A lot of websites, lots of different places to go to learn about the university. Thank you so much. Up next, we have the American University of Paris. Hello and bonsoir everyone. My name is Nick Hewer. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions here with the American University of Paris. I'm gonna move pretty quickly here, uh, but if you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to me. I am based in Chicago in the United States, so time zones are a little bit more convenient for our students. Uh, to kick off, I'll give you some facts about AUP. So we are a small, private, liberal arts university. We are located right in the heart of uh, the 7th arrondissement in Paris. Uh, in total, we only have about a thousand undergraduate students, uh, but despite our small size, we do have a, a pretty significant global reach so um, those thousand students represent about 100 different nationalities. We have 65 or so languages spoken on campus. Uh, beyond that, about 23% of our students hold more than one passport. So we do uh, have quite a lot of students that come to us and identify as third culture. So that generally means that parent one is from country A and parent two is from country B and maybe their child grew up in, in country C. So it speaks to a little bit of the global offering that we have at AUP. 
Beyond that, our faculty are really just as diverse as our students. Uh, we have about uh, 21 different nationalities represented across our faculty, and 68% of our faculty speak more than one language. Um, as you might imagine, with such a small undergraduate population, we do have a, a really small um, average class size. It's about 15. And our um, full-time faculty to student ratio is about 8 to 1. So students really do receive quite a lot of attention. At AUP, we have about uh, 26 undergraduate majors uh, total, and we do have a number of minors as well. We have them kind of broken out here by uh, subject area, and I'll highlight just a few of them for you. So you can see, um, certainly, obviously, we're in Paris, so we have an art history major. Um, we really do believe in Paris as a classroom, so our students are able to go out to museums. Uh, classes do often visit museums, and they have that opportunity to, to get out and actually experience the artwork that they're learning about. Um, beyond that, we do have a, a growing uh, journalism major and a film studies major as well. So you're welcome to come study film with us in Paris. Uh, we do have a global communications major, which is one of our most popular majors. And uh, as I'm reading through some of the majors here, you will hear me use the words global and international quite a lot. At AUP, we really believe in a global education and we do call our students global explorers, uh, which may be a little bit cheesy, but it really does speak to kind of who we are as a university. Um, beyond that, we do have some economics and management majors. Um, again, you'll see international quite a lot, so international finance, international economics, international business administration, um, and then we have a marketing and management as well. Um, we have a computer science major, so you're welcome to come study computer science with us in Paris. Um, we do have a growing environmental science major program as well. Um, we do have the classic psychology program and then a growing gender sexuality and society major for students. Um, we are located in Paris, so obviously we do have some history majors for students to come and study. Um, one that I really like to highlight is the PPE program, which is a very European program. Not a lot of schools in the U.S. offer that. That's philosophy, politics, and economics. So it offers quite a myriad of exposure to different topics for students, and it's sort of the pre-law degree um, of Europe. Uh, we do have quite a lot of internships available for students as well. Um, a few that I do typically like to highlight are with the United Nations Environmental Program, uh, the International Chamber of Commerce, if you're interested in studying fashion. Um, we do have that as a minor, so students have uh, done internships with Chanel, Lacoste, and Vogue before. Um, finance majors have worked with AXA and HSBC Global. Uh, you can see the full list here. Um, this is what I like to call gratuitously our campus map. Uh, on the far right is our main administrative building, and then on the far left, obviously, you'll recognize the Eiffel Tower. This really speaks to our location right in the heart of the 7th Allendisement. Uh, I think that the map is a little bit uh, misleading. It makes things look way more spread out than they really are. Um, so everything's really about five or 10 minutes walking on campus. Um, that building with the gold dome that you see in the foreground is Les Invalides, where Napoleon's buried. And then um, kind of all of the other buildings are sewn into the seventh. So we are an urban open campus. Uh, you'll see the little shops and patisseries and boulangeries kind of as you walk through. The bottom right down there is actually one of our classroom buildings, Passage, uh, Passage Landreau. And uh, the picture that you see on the far left is Route Saint-Dominique, which is really right in the heart of our campus. It's one of the first things that you see. So it is really quite beautiful, a very um, quintessential French experience for our students. Um, you'll see down in the bottom right, if any of you have maybe seen Emily in Paris, you'll recognize that bridge, the Pont d'Alexandre. Um, it's around the corner from campus. So uh, again, we're very, very centrally located. Um, in really the heart of Paris. This is um, some of the housing that we have available. This isn't all of the housing options we have, but this is on the Champs-Élysées. Um, it's just a few steps from the Arc de Triomphe. Um, this is obviously called our Champs-Élysées housing. Uh, I, I found out recently this is actually owned by the Qatari royal family, but we have converted it into student housing, so you can get an idea. At AUP, uh, since we are an urban open campus, we don't have a meal plan for our students, but um, we do have kitchenettes available so students are able to cook their own food. And we do have housing available in single, double, and triple accommodation, depending on your preference and your budget. Um, as far as the application requirement goes, uh, we try to keep it as, as simple and straightforward as possible. Um, so we do holistic review on all of our applications, um, and you're welcome to submit your application to us through Common App or through our AUP application. We generally just require your personal statement, which we look over for uh, spelling, grammar, things like that, a supplemental essay that's sort of why AUP. So when you're completing that, I encourage you to kind of maybe don't focus on Paris, but focus on AUP a little bit more. Um, we like to see a list of your clubs and activities, two letters of recommendation, your transcripts, and then we are a fully test optional school and we have been since prior to COVID. So it's totally up to you whether or not you'd like to submit that ACT or SAT score for us. Um, our cost of attendance comes in roughly at about 53,000 euro, which is just shy of $60,000. Um, that's tuition, living expenses, that's really all in uh, to come and, and study in Paris. Uh, beyond that, we have merit-based and need-based financial aid. Um, and our, our need-based financial aid can cover up to 50% of tuition. So it is really quite affordable for students to come to Paris and study with us. Um, 
we do for any uh, IB uh, diploma recipients out there, we do have a very generous IB diploma scholarship as well. Um, the admissions timeline is going to be pretty consistent with most other universities. So early actions November 15th and February, we kind of have our priority deadline. Um, and then we'll walk you through the visa process as uh, time moves forward. If you have any additional questions, that QR code on the bottom left will connect you to my page. And you can follow us on Instagram with that QR code on the right. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much. It's fantastic. All right. Up next, we have Chapman University. Marie, you're muted. I'm on like three different screens. So thank you all for your, your patience there. Thank you for being here tonight. My name is Marie Burry Lowe. I am one of the associate directors of admission here at Chapman and I'm Happy to be talking to you a little bit more about the university. So Chapman's located in the heart of Southern California. We're in the city of Orange, which is really in the center of Orange County, sandwiched right between LA and San Diego, right in the middle and about 20 minutes from our local beaches. Chapman has a average size. We are about 7,400 undergraduate students that make up that population coming from almost every state across the country and nearly 80 different countries around the world. You'll certainly hear different languages and different experiences and all of that on our campus as well. In addition to all of this, Chapman is one of the largest private institutions in the state of California. One of the things that I like to tell a lot of our students about is the academic experience, that interdisciplinary component that you're going to get while you're here. You have nearly 10 different schools and colleges that you can choose from once you're at Chapman with a whole wide variety of majors. We do identify as a liberal arts institution, but also as a research institution. You're going to get your hands dirty. That's really important. All of our students have an opportunity to jump into your area of study right from the beginning of your first semester of your first year. So if you're choosing to come in undecided, also a top five, I'll put air quotes around this major for many of our students that are coming in each year, that is a really popular option and you certainly have opportunity to explore. An interdisciplinary component that comes with a Chapman degree is really going to be that every student is actually required to take classes that are both outside of their major of study and outside of general education, allowing you to have a really dynamic curriculum and adding in different areas across different schools and colleges and, and different things that interest you. To dive a little bit more into our location, the city in, of Orange is in and of itself actually reminds me quite a bit of the like downtown Winter Park area. And so since you're all from the Central Florida area, I figured I would mention that. Um, you walk right around the corner from our campus and really has such a vibrant college town feel to it. You can be about 20 minutes away and head to our local beaches, you can head about an hour and a half north of us and get to ski and snowboard in the winter time, or even about 10 to 12 minutes and get to Disneyland. You can see the fireworks from campus every night around 9 p.m. So if you're in the right spot and you catch it, um, that's certainly a perk for you. While many of our students initially think that they need to go up to LA or need to go down to San Diego and other areas to find a job or internship, there's nearly 85,000 different, 85, different businesses that are located right in our backyard. To give you an example of where our, our students are being hired post-grad, there are a lot of different opportunities here on your screen for you. This is just a small sampling. So right in Orange County, we do have everything from top accounting firms to technology, engineering, healthcare, so many different things, startups, and maybe you'll even be starting your own business while you're at Chapman too. Certainly getting that hands-on experience and putting it to good use. On campus, socially, there's a lot to participate in. There's nearly 200 different clubs and organizations on our campus, as well as intramural sports, division three sports, club teams, and then on top of that, Greek life. About a third of our students are part of Greek life. Many of our students hold leadership positions on our campus and are very involved. So there's so much, whether you're looking for something just for fun, something more professional oriented, maybe a co-ed fraternity, um, professional oriented or something there too, to kind of dive into that side as well. Lots of activities and other things to jump into too. 
when you are thinking about the admission process, you have a whole lot of resources that are here on our campus. I myself will be your admission counselor and working with you through, the, through this whole process to give you some idea of what that looks like. We are on the common application. We have about 15,000 students that apply to Chapman every year. Last year, we accepted about 65% of them. So when you're looking at that, um, that's a, a good percentage of students that were coming in. Um, our average GPA is about a 3.8, and we did make the decision to move test optional pre-COVID. So we are excited to continue that um, into a hopeful post-COVID world as we move forward. When you're looking at the application process, there's so many things that we're looking at. Like many of my colleagues that have spoken before me, we're looking at so many pieces, right? We of course wanna see your academics, how you're doing in your curriculum. That's something that's going to take the forefront of the admission process for almost any institution that you're applying to. But we also really wanna dive into what are those courses that might relate to your ma major of study. I like to use business as a really quick example and saying, if you're coming into a business program, we certainly wanna make sure that you're prepared in the area of math and, and well prepared to hit those classes right from the start once you're here. We also wanna see, what you're doing in your outside of your classroom, what type of community impact are you having? That doesn't have to be a list of a hundred different activities, but how are you spending your time and what, is, what does that look like for you? So we can really see how that will translate for you once you're here on our campus. Ultimately, we wanna know why you want to come to Chapman. There are a lot of perks to coming to Southern California, certainly, but dive into that a little bit deeper and tell us specifically what's interesting to you at Chapman, whether that be academic offerings, social offerings, all different kinds of things, or maybe an opportunity to visit campus. Education can be really expensive. And so as we start to break this down, there are a lot of ways that we start to go through that financial aid process. Merit-based scholarships are the first one. We automatically consider every student for that merit-based scholarship, and then we'll certainly work with you and your family through those next steps as well. You can connect with us here. I, again, will be your admission counselor. I'll drop my contact information in the chat so that you have it for later, but you're welcome to stay connected with us, with us from here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. And a quick reminder to all of our participants to use that Q&A function to ask questions of any of our schools here during the presentations. Up next, we have Southern Methodist University. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Destiny Whitaker, and I'm one of the admission counselors here at SMU's Undergraduate Office of Admission, and I am so excited to talk to y'all more about our wonderful university. You'll see at the bottom of the screen, we have a QR code that will take you to our online publications that will have all the information in this presentation, in this presentation and many more um, information about SMU. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get started and talk about SMU and Dallas as your global gateway. So I was born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I absolutely love this slide because in the background, you can see the beautiful skyline of town, downtown Dallas. We are located just five miles north from downtown in our own little private neighborhood. And we like to say it's the best of both worlds because you get to attend a mid-sized private university that is located in the second fastest growing city in the US, right behind New York, and also the fourth, fourth, fourth most diverse city in the US. So there's really something for everyone here at SMU and in the city of Dallas for you to explore that we'll talk about throughout the presentation as well. Jumping into our student population, we like to say we are Goldilocks size here at SMU. Not too big, not too small. We have just around 12,000 students with our freshman class every single year being more or less 1,500 students. So as you can see here on the screen, our average class size is about 22 students. So what does this mean for you? Essentially, you are never going to be just a number here at SMU. All of our classes are taught by 100% full-time faculty. So no teaching assistants, no teaching aides. These are gonna be people who have been in their field for a very, very long time and determined to make sure that you can be the best that you can be personally, professionally, and academically. Um, something that tends to surprise a lot of students about SMU is that majority of our students do come from out of state, but since of course the great state of Texas is really, really big, the state that is represented the most on campus is Texas. 
But nonetheless, we have all 50 states represented as well as students coming from 90 different countries. So you're gonna have the opportunity to hear from lots of different perspectives, people from lots of different backgrounds, which is something that's going to play a key role in your academic experience. Um, along with geographic diversity, we also have racial and ethnic diversity with our population of students of color on campus, making up 31% of our student body. And so this is something that I take lots of pride in and that plays a pivotal factor into the SMU student body community. Awesome, so jumping into academics. Here at SMU, we have five academic schools with over 100 different majors for our students to explore. Right here is a quick snapshot of all of our different schools. We are a liberal arts school, and so you're gonna see the liberal arts foundation built into our curriculum, and in the fact that about 40% of our students here at SMU double major. So you could be a dance major on the pre-med track, or an English major on the pre-law track, no matter what it may be, it does not have to make sense. We have students pursuing business, dance, and engineering all at the same time. Our students are able to pursue all of these things and still graduate in four years using what our academic advisors call the SMU M4 plan. So you are going to be supported when it comes to pursuing all of your different passions, um, leaving the hilltop with multiple degrees if that's something that you're interested in doing. Awesome. So student life at SMU, what is there to do? We have over 200 campus organizations. Say you have a really big initiative that you want to start, or maybe you have an organization that you started at your high school that we do not yet have on campus. All you need to do is find a faculty or a staff member, and we can get that organization added on campus. Um, going back to the idea of SMU being the best of both worlds, right? We are a mid-sized private institution, but we are a school that is huge on sports and traditions. So we have 17 Division I sports here at SMU. You do not need to buy a season pass to any of the football games, basketball games, equestrian meets, whatever it may be. All you need is your student ID to get into those different events. We also have club sports teams if you want to maybe pursue athletics, but at a level not as intense as Division I. Our club tennis team is going to nationals. Our club volleyball team is on its way to nationals right now. So lots of opportunities there, as well as intramural sports if you just want to get out, get active, have fun. That's more my speed, whatever it may be, lots of opportunities to pursue athletics at SMU as well if that's something that you're interested in. Now, going back to Dallas and all the opportunities that we have here, earlier I mentioned that we are the second fastest growing city in the US and also voted by Forbes as one of the best cities to be in for jobs. So here in Dallas, we have over two dozen Fortune 500 companies that many of our students intern at during their time here on the Hilltop which then leads to postgraduate job opportunities for all of my students that are interested in the arts. Something that surprises a lot of people about Dallas is that we are home to the largest arts district in the US. So bigger than New York and bigger than LA, the Dallas art community is really great and our students have a unique opportunity to get involved in that during their time here at SMU, as well as on Handshake, which is our student worker platform where we list on-campus jobs, off-campus jobs, internships, Every single year, we list more internships than we even have students on campus to fill. So there are more than enough opportunities to go around here on our campus. Jumping into the application process, huge takeaway from this slide is going to be our deadlines and the fact that we do not do rolling admission for our students here at SMU. So application opens on August 1st. Take your time. You have all the way up into that November 1st deadline or January 15th deadline. All students are going to get a decision at the same time. So if you apply by November 1st, you'll hear back around mid-December. And if you apply by January 15th, you'll hear back around mid-March. We have three different application methods. There is not one that is preferred. We just encourage you all to do the one that is gonna be best for you and your high school counselor to make sure you can get all those documents uploaded. And this is a little bit about what we look at whenever we are reviewing students for admission. Here at SMU, we do a holistic and contextual review. So us as admission counselors are here to answer all of your questions and just be a resource for you on campus. So thank y'all so, so much for joining in and I'll be sure to drop my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you very much. And last but not least tonight, we have Rollins College. Yes, hi there. Thank you all for being here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. All righty. Well, hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Alyssa Jovita. I serve as the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Rollins College, uh, right in most of your backyards. Um, 
So we are a liberal arts college. So essentially what that means is uh, you are going to get a well-rounded education at Rollins, meaning uh, you'll take courses outside of your major, uh, making sure that you get um, an education that exposes you to different perspectives, that uh, you're an effective critical thinker, a great communicator, a problem solver. Um, and so about two thirds of the classes that you take at Rollins will actually be outside of whatever major you end up choosing. We were founded in 1885, so we are the oldest college in the state of Florida. Uh, we've always been on our campus in Winter Park on the shores of Lake Virginia. Um, and for a long time now, we've been named as the number one regional university in the South. Um, so for context, I know many of you are, are local, but um, we, we are in Winter Park, which is just about 15 minutes outside of downtown Orlando. So all the things you love about Orlando are, are the things that our students get to enjoy as well. Um, so our undergraduate population is um, just about 2100 students now we are an undergraduate focused institution, though, we do have some graduate programs as well, um, particularly our um, MBA program is the top MBA program in Florida, and we actually have um, an accelerated management program in which students can get a bachelor's degree in three years and get their MBA in two years. So while we're primarily focused on our undergrads, we do have some graduate programs. Um, our students, uh, about half of them come from Florida. So um, definitely not, not unusual to be a Floridian and end up at Rollins, but about 40% of our students do come from out of state, um, from about 39 different states. And then we have an international population that we're very proud of, makes up about 10% of our student body, and they come from more than 60 different countries. So lots of languages being spoken, um, and it creates a really interesting dynamic in our small discussion-based classes. Um, and then of our domestic population, about 27% of our students are students of color. So in terms of our academic programs, we have 60 different options for you to choose from. Um, these range from business to biology to education to communication to anthropology. So um, we have a lot of different choices for our students. Uh, we also offer a robust list of minors, uh, and we have several pre-professional tracks as well, such as pre-law uh, and pre-med. Uh, average class size at Rollins is about 17 students. So like I mentioned earlier, we have a smaller undergraduate population. So that means our classes get to be small. So um, what you're very much used to in high school right now um, is, is what continues on into college if you end up choosing Rollins. Uh, you'll never have a class bigger than 30 students um, while you're at Rollins. Um, and finally, you'll never be taught by a graduate assistant or a teaching assistant while you're at Rollins. Um, you will be taught by a faculty member. Um, and the reality is that our, our faculty members are at Rollins um, because they love to teach and um, they're committed to mentoring our students and working closely with them and advising them and, and teaching them because they are experts in their fields. Um, about 97% of them have their terminal degrees, which is great. So in terms of student life, uh, our students, you know, I, I, I can't fail to mention that they do love to take advantage of the Winter Park area. We are in a really great safe residential area with lots of things to do outdoors. Uh, but on our campus, we have more than 100 different student organizations that ranges from our national championship winning debate team to community service organizations to um, civic organizations to um, pretty robust fraternity and sorority life. So there really is something for everyone on our campus. Uh, we do have NCAA Division II athletics at Rollins. So that means that we do uh, offer athletic scholarships for most of our sports, um, but we do offer club and intramurals as well if uh, you don't want to play play at the collegiate level too. So it's a great way to be social and have fun and stay active. And then um, important to note that Rollins is primarily a residential campus. So that means that uh, the majority of our students do live on campus uh, because we require them to for the first three years. So that creates for a really great um, campus community since most of our students are, are living and learning uh, on the Rollins campus. But um, for all of you that are local, you would have the option if you do live within a 50 mile radius of campus to live at home with a parent or guardian um, if you chose to do so. Uh, we do guarantee housing for you um, as a local student, even if um, 
you, you, you do want to live on campus, so we're happy to have you, but just note that that is an option uh, if that's the right fit. Uh, we have very strong outcomes at Rollins, so we, we really believe in our education, but we have um, a career and life planning office that focuses a lot on making sure that our students are prepared for whatever that next step is after graduation. Uh, we do have a four-year graduation guarantee at Rollins, so you'll be in and out in a quick four years. It goes really quickly. Uh, but 97% of our graduates are placed in either the workforce, volunteer service, uh, or graduate school within a year of graduation. So we work really hard to make sure that they're prepared for that next step. Um, I won't go too deep today into what the application process looks like, but we do offer both early decision and regular decision. Um, we do a holistic review, so we're looking at your application contextually. Um, you can see some of the middle 50% ranges and averages on the academic side, but um, we are also test optional and, and have been for many years. So we are looking at everything that you submit because we really want to get to know uh, who you are as a student and um, if Rollins is a good fit for you um, as well as vice versa. So um, just super quickly, we will consider you for academic scholarships automatically. They are partial. You can see the range on the screen. Um, and as Floridians, you are able to bring your Bright Future scholarship to Rollins, which is awesome. Uh, you also get an in-state grant as a resident too. So we put together really competitive financial aid packages. Um, we'd love to have you on campus. I'll be honest, I was a local student back in the day and I thought I knew Rollins, but until I actually visited campus, I, I realized I really didn't. So we'd love to have you. And um, I am your admission counselor. I work with our local students. So my contact information is on the screen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to all of our presenters here today. We have some time for um, some quick Q&A. So I'll go ahead and ask everyone to come back on the screen here. And I'll go ahead with our first question. Our first question, well, I think we'll have time for one question tonight. So our, our only question for tonight will be, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So we'll leave everyone off tonight with some good advice here. We'll go in the same order. Sure. Hi, everyone. Again, um, if I have one piece of advice to give students, I would say don't feel like you have to have it all figured out right away. Um, I was applying to colleges, believe it or not, five short years ago. Um, and I remember looking back and realizing that I thought that I had to have, you know, exactly the what I wanted to major in was what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. It's not like that at all. Most colleges, you have the option to come in undeclared. Um, and then have the option to switch things around once you get um, a better sense of who you are as a person. We really care about that. Um, I think all admissions teams care about that and realize that as well. So thank you everyone for being with us tonight. Hi again, everyone. So my best piece of advice for high school students when you start the college search process is to definitely try to start early, um, whether it's sophomore or junior year, definitely start the search process early on. Utilize every single resource you can, whether that's visiting the campus, using um, the school's website, any brochures you can get your hands on. Try to get gather as much information as possible, especially in your sophomore and junior year, so that by senior year, you know exactly what questions you need to answer, and you know exactly the schools that you're looking into when you start to apply. So. Um, that's my best piece of advice. I think those are all uh, great pieces of advice to have, certainly. And, and thank you all for sticking with us tonight. I appreciate it. Um, I'd say probably the best advice I could give um, is really just to make sure you choose an institution that's really going to speak to you and the goals that you have in life. Um, certainly, academics are going to be the most part of selecting any, any institution of higher education, but there are a lot of experiences and life lessons that ultimately really do shape the person that you become. So academics should be at the center of that decision, but, but consider the peripherals as well, I'd say. echo everything that all of my colleagues on here have already said, of course. But I think one of the important things is to really dive into the curriculum that you're looking for. What we call one major on our campus might be called something different on another campus. So it's really important, I think, for you to even take the extra step. And I know it's not the most exciting and fancy part of a college website, but dive into the course curriculum in that catalog that can be really helpful. And then also looking at 
at areas of study that might tangentially be of interest to you, knowing that your major might change at some point when you're here. Yes, again, all the advice that everyone has given is so great. Um, my little tidbit would be just to keep your options open. There are six incredible universities on this screen. And if we any of us said something that maybe caught your attention, you know, go onto the website, look into it. I know as humans, we have the tendency to just want to stick with what we know or what's comfortable. But many of our students at SMU, and I'm sure everyone on the screen has students like this as well, they'll be like, SMU wasn't even on my radar. This school wasn't even on my radar. And now I'm a senior here and about to graduate. So keep your options open. And like I said, great university. So be sure to look into it. Such good advice. No, it's hard to go last because this is all, all very good advice from, from my colleagues on here. I would say my biggest piece of advice is within reason and whatever is feasible for you, try to visit the campuses that you're interested in and keep those options open. Um, because actually seeing and feeling the vibes on campus and interacting with students really can open your eyes to an institution um, and what, what it's truly like. I know we all do a great job on our websites and you can learn a lot that way, but actually getting on a campus and interacting with faculty and interacting with students can give you the true sense of, you know, is this going to be the right place for me to spend my four years? There's also a lot of great virtual tours now too, so use those as a resource. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. That's all fantastic advice. Thank you for being here today and sharing more about your schools with our participants. And thank you, participants, for joining us as well. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five-question survey, so we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings from yesterday and today at strivescan.com slash Central Florida. That's strivescan.com slash Central Florida. Thank you very much. Have a great evening and best of luck on your college search process.